Hey there, Powered Up the uh, American Rotary ADX 15 phase converter. Kindly provided by them, and it works great. It really does. And what I'm going to do here, yeah, hope you're all doing good today. It's still pretty early, but not as early as I should be up. Okay, I'm going to dress this wheel here. Let's see if I can get it where you can watch me do that. Okay, what's that doing? I think we're locked up there. Okay, I'm going to kick on the wheel here. i got a vacuum hooked up here too. It's real nice. Hey, you see how going? That's the right direction. Okay, I'm going to go in and see that wheel. I don't have a wheel card on here because I don't have one that fits. And that's real typical. But I'm going to try to uh, fabricate a lot of wheel guards. That's kind of like wrong. You just want to stay uh, out of the glass on here. Keep on getting close to that. Oh yeah. Okay, let me see it in uh, just about a thousand. Good, yeah. Now one of the things I do when I dress the wheel, and especially if you're going to have your fingers close to it, is I'll take a Norbite stick and just break this edge. And that'll, that'll keep it from cutting you real bad. It'll stuff you, but it won't cut to the bone. Okay, I'm gonna have my uh, fingers close to this device. Okay. Turn up the back here. And it's all spinning down. Okay, what we're going to do, I'll back up here, is we're going to use the MA Ford, the real deal here, Unicam Resharpening Fixture. Now, there's a bunch of resharpening fixtures on the market, or had been. Some very expensive, you don't even KO leak, uh, large fixtures. But we got the factory deal here. And uh, it is an interesting device and pretty tricky. And I don't think they make this anymore, can't find it. Uh, these things uh, were sold for a long time for uh, about $65, $75. Then the last price I saw on this, and I'm not sure what it was, probably eight or so years ago, that I could find was $245. So what this is, and let's have a good look at it. It's got this little ball bearing on this collar here, and it follows this cam. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to take the time to look at the concept of sharpening your dull, extremely dull, single lip um, countersinks. So we've got uh, this cam surface. Let me get this lower. On each end of this cylindrical thing, Let's see if I can make it work. See, it's going down. That's a tenth indicator, too. Let me make sure that's tight. All oh, this stuff's loose. Hold on. 
That whole thing came loose. Wouldn't you know it? Now, one side had about 26,000. This side. Somewhere in there. 26,000 ramp. Let's look at it from the side here if you can see it. Here's the low spot here. And then it does a ramp up to this. Now, this side has less of a ramp. Let's see if I can get it in there. Back it off. Quite a bit less. Now, one side of this, see there, it's going down. Now, each turn of this uh, indicator is uh, 10 thousandths. Okay. So, one side is for under one half inch, or one half inch and under, and this side is for one half inch and uh, over. And this side has the most ramp to it. So you get like uh, this size here, which is a three quarters. So we'll use this sleeve into the body and on this side. Okay, and you see there's a hole through the sleeve. Now we take the collar. And it says in the instructions, I'll take this out real quick. We put the collar on this. Now, if it's a three-quarter shank, you just put this right on the three-quarter with that ball there. Get to the set screw. <laughs> Hang in there. I'll try to keep it in the camera too. So you run the set screw through that hole. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Through the hole. Then we'll put the shank in. Okay. Then they say right here, you line up the cutting edge with this notch right here. And you see this plus minus? Now, this is interesting about this. And I'll, sh I'll talk about that. Now, get it right on there and get that uh, in there and lock it. We'll, we'll just do this right to the notch. Now, what's interesting with the plus minus if you find your uh, countersink is uh, chattering in some materials, you can line up the edge more towards this minus and have less clearance and it'll dig in less. Or for maximum cut, you can move towards positive. So we'll just go normal. <laughs> okay. And I got that in there. Make sure it's snug. Good and snug. That's good and snug. Now I'm going to put it in the oversize like that, okay? Now the next step is the fixture. And that's kind of tricky. <laughs> so what I've got, I found the best. I was trying it with a vise and stuff. And you got to get your fingers in there. So I'm mounting this thing. I got this old time hard inch head here. It's a 5C and I got a 5C adapter and a three jaw chuck. And it's got this flat. And it says put the flat towards the wheel. And I put it in here because I can extend it out and work this thing with my hand. So I'm going to take a square here and make sure it probably doesn't have to be exactly lined up, but it's going to get it right there. All right. Snuck that in good. Okay. Now you put this assembly in. Okay. 
and we'll get over and uh, let me see here. Crank this whole table on over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Got a got a freshly dressed wheel here. And by the way, I made this uh, dresser out of scrap stuff from uh, Rob Shop, and also adapted this uh, finger assembly to my work head. And it's got the satisfying click that Rob talked about. If you find any fingers like this, let me know. Max uh, Grant at Swan Valley needs one. It's uh, for a Rochelo, I believe. Okay. So, okay. Now I'm going to crank it over to this side. I'm going to lower the wheel head about center. And I will be back for the grind. Okay, in part two. Hey, thanks for tuning in. And we'll head back over to Rob's shop, too. Okay.